Hi guys, this video is going to show you how to install Opusfelt 6 ENB mod. Now I recently did a video showcasing that mod and you can check that out for details if you haven't seen it. Okay, so first thing we're going to need are all the files and the main file is actually the enbdev.com file. You can find a link for it on Opusfelt 6 ENB Nexus page right here. This is where you're going to get the actual mod itself. This is something I didn't cover in previous videos in enough detail. But what we're doing here when we go to enbdev.com is we're actually downloading the ENB mod itself. What you get at Nexus is the configuration for that mod. All of the ENB mods use um, the ENB mod created by a gentleman named Boris. Um, his full name is on the, there you go, Boris Vorontsov. Again, apologies if that is, uh, if I said that incorrectly. He has made the ENB mod. He is, he is the one who's done the, what I would consider the, the bulk of the technical work. And the mod authors such as Opusfelt 6, what they have done is they have tweaked it, added a few things, changed a, thing, a few things here and there to get a preset. So it's a sort of a collaboration. The Boris Vorontsov, without him, there would be no ENB mods. Okay, so he does deserve a lot of credit and I've never mentioned that before and I probably should have. So there you go. Oh, and if the next question is, what does ENB stand for? I have no idea. And I don't think anyone else does except Boris himself. Uh, I think it's one of those mysterious secrets that we may never ever find an answer to. However, for now, we're going to download ENB series 0.117 beta. Uh, yes, I know, I'm saying that word in, uh, incorrectly again. So I'm gonna save that to my desktop. I am also going to need the file from the Nexus page from Opusfelt 6 ENB, now the main file, download manually. Again, I'm gonna save it to my desktop. Once those two files have downloaded, I recommend extracting them. I'm using WinRAR and I'm going to extract them to a folder of the same name. So I now have a folder with that file in it so I can delete that file. And I'm going to do the same for Opusfelt ENB. Um, extract two, and there you go. I now have the extracted folders that I'm going to need to install this mod. Okay, to start the installation process, you're going to need your Skyrim folder. That is Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, usually. For me, it's on its own hard drive called Games. Uh, this will vary for you. You're going to need that folder, not the data folder. You don't go in there. This is the folder where you find the Skyrim launcher and the TESV executable file. You're going to need that open. And the first thing we're going to do is open up the ENB series folder. And inside there, you'll notice an injector version and a wrapper version. Now, if you, if you saw last week's installation video, you probably know the difference between those. Uh, the wrapper version is the version you should use. Use this one unless there is a reason for you not to. And that reason is usually you already have another mod that has such a file. Um, if you if you if you have that, then you're going to use the injector version. Check last week's installation video for for a more in depth description of that and how you run the game with the injector version. But for ninety nine point nine percent of you, it's the wrapper version you need. Now in the mods installation, it tells you you're going to need all of these files copied into your game folder. In actual fact. The only one you really need is this one, the DLL, the D3D9 DLL. I can copy that across. You can copy the rest across if you like. These text files are completely, uh, they don't do anything. They're there for your own reading. Read them if you wish. The other files will all get overwritten by Opusfelt 6's uh, configuration files. If you're going to use the injector version, the only three files you really need are the ENB injector executable, the INI file, and the ENB series.dll. 
Again, the instructions tell you to copy the entire folder, and you can, if you want to do that, you can, but those are the three you need. That's if you're using the injector version instead of the wrapper version. So if you've copied the d3d9.dll file from the wrapper version, you don't need these. I cannot stress that enough. You, you choose one or the other. The d3d9 from this folder, from the wrapper version, or these three files from the injector version. And you only use the injector version if you have a good reason. Okay, so that's the actual ENB file we need. Now let's look at Opusfelt's folder. The instructions tell you to literally copy the entire folder into your game folder. And that does work, and it works pretty well. And there's even a little BAT file, a batch file here. And if I edit this with Notepad, um, I can see it. it is actually an auto uninstall which is a really nice idea. I really like this. So this would actually allow you to copy all of these files across and then when you, when you wanted to uninstall it, you, you just run this and it would uninstall everything. However, I have a very, very strict policy that I never add files to my data folder without going through the mod manager. Anything that affects the data folder is controlled by my mod manager, in this case, Nexus mod manager. I have a very strict policy of this so that I can see exactly which files it is overwriting. So I am not going to copy the data folder. I am going to copy all of the rest. So I'm gonna copy all of these into my game folder, into the Skyrim folder, not the data folder. So there you go. And that includes a folder. Now, you do need these data files, you do need them. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm gonna use WinRAR. You can use any archive program that you've got, but I'm going to use WinRAR and I'm going to add to archive and I'm going to call this Opeth Felt 6, when it's 6, ENB data. This is all of the data files for Opeth Felt 6's ENB. And I now have this. I, I'm going to drag this out and put it onto the desktop. That is all the data uh, files um, compressed to a RAR file. I then go along to Nexus Mod Manager and I use the Add Mod from File option and select the file I just made. That now creates the FOMOD package and I simply find it in the list and then I activate it. That has now added the data files needed. In this case, what it's actually added are these five files. Um, I actually, the realistic lighting patcher requires the realistic lighting, so I like to move realistic lighting above the realistic lighting patcher. It actually doesn't matter, I believe. I believe Skyrim is quite clever um, in the way it loads files now and will reorder them if required on the fly. Um, I've not seen load order issues of that nature before, so I'm assuming Skyrim is a little cleverer. Um, but that's it. I now have all the data files required for this mod. There are some any tweaks that you should uh, make sure are set in your Skyrim prefs.ini file. You usually find that in under Documents, My Games, Skyrim, and it will be the skyrimprefs.ini. Edit it with either Notepad or Notepad++. You're gonna to need to find all of these values. So what I usually do is I normally select the whole thing, copy it, go along to here, press Control F to find, paste it into there, and hit Find Next. And as you can see for me, it already equals one. Just make sure it equals one, all of these. And you can do the same for all of them. I'm just going to copy, go here, Control F, paste into here, Control V if you don't know the shortcut for that, find next, and again, set to one. Do that for all four values, and remember to save when you're done if you've had to change anything. There is one other tweak the mod author recommends, and so I recommend you follow his advice, and that is to change the F gamma option. So go along here, Control F, 
control V and define this and to change this from whatever it is to 1.0 this is a matter of personal taste so it's going to depend on you I would recommend you try this um, and then adjust the brightness in game using the slider just to get things exactly how you want and then just save this he also recommends making sure that you have water reflection on the B reflect sky equals one. You can either find this in your Skyrim ini file, which is in the same place as the Skyrim prefs. There you go, set to one. Or you can actually change that in the Skyrim game launcher. It's one of the basic options. And that really is all there is to it. You can now start the game up as normal and when it does, you should get a message in the top left corner telling you the ENB mod is running. There you go. You may notice that the text in the menus looks slightly fuzzy around the edges, not quite as sharp as normal. That is normal. It is a side effect of the FXAA um, that comes with this mod. Don't worry about it. It only really affects the text in these very dark menus. And that is it. The mod is installed. If you want to remove the, the lens flare, as I did in this video, it's pretty easy. The easiest way to do it is to go to the Skyrim game folder and delete the ENB sunsprite.fx and the TGA file. If you delete those two, it seems to get rid of it. I checked with the mod author. He said, yep, yeah, that's one way of doing it. There is another way apparently, but that was pretty simple. So that's how I would do it. Now to uninstall the mod, it's pretty simple. It's basically the reverse. Go along to Nexus Mod Manager and deactivate the data files. You're not gonna need those anymore. And well, you can delete all of the files you added by hand. You can actually delete them all, or you can just use the little file the mod author gave you, uninstall Opethfelt 6 dot bat double click on it it then asks you whether you want to delete the files you click yes press the enter key and then it asks you to press any key and it does its thing and it deletes everything however i did notice it does not delete the enb sun sprite files that i mentioned before so delete those by hand and that's it you've completely uninstalled it Okay guys, I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys next time.